to kind of start where this the origin of this podcast started. I woke up one morning and I hadn't had a good night of sleep. And the reason why, oddly enough, was because throughout my dream, throughout my dream, I was thinking about the psychological (laughs) impact of social media. Like, I was thinking about how psychologically as a society, we have been impacted by the presence of social media, by the by the prevalent presence of social media. And when I woke up, I was just jotting my thoughts down of how I think that social media has positively impacted our psyche, but then also how it's negatively impacted our collective psyche. And I am just going to share some of those thoughts with you. And then I will talk about something that I saw the other day on my social media feed and how I feel like that relates to me and how I feel and how we can improve our social media presence and, I don't know, make sense of this online world that is confusing and fucking makes no sense. So in my pros list, (laughs) I have my first pro is that social media is and can be an outlet for self-expression that allows us to connect with like-minded individuals. Friendships and communities can form, allowing people a sense of belonging and companionship. Creative and business endeavors can be formed due to this ability to connect, and it can be really progressive to one's career. So, I think that this one honestly is dare I say, the reason why social media was created in the first place was so we would be able to connect with our friends, our family, and even with people all over the world and form connections. And I think that it is the most important aspect of social media, regardless of what the platform is, the ability to form connections with people is a vital aspect of the entire thing. And the reason why I feel like this aspect, it depends on how you look at it, but for the sake of this podcast episode, we're going to look at it from a positive perspective because I do think it's inherently positive. I think the impact of this, this ability to connect and learn and to build friendships and relationships with people who are like-minded, it positively impacts our psyche because it creates this sense of community, this sense of belonging, this sense of friendship. And think about all of the people who may not have that in their real life, you know what I mean? So when they wake up in the morning and they go to work and they go to school or when they're spending time with their family, they feel like they don't have that sense of pure connection that's there and feel like they're surrounded by people who don't quite vibe with them and don't quite understand them. When you're able to go online at the end of the day or throughout your day and you're able to connect with people who think similar things as you think or they're into the same things that you are or whatever the common thread may be between you and these people, it creates this sense of, like I said, belonging. So humans are very tribal beings and I feel like that's something that we don't quite talk about as often, the fact that we need each other. We enjoy being around people. We enjoy being praised by people. We enjoy being cared for and loved by people. Even if you try to deny that and try to act like that doesn't apply to you, it does. We as a collective enjoy being a part of a collective. And when we feel ostracized from that collective, we begin to have feelings of decreased self-esteem. We don't enjoy spending time with ourselves. We have a warped vision of where we belong and nobody likes feeling like that, right? Like, I think a general consensus, no one likes feeling like they don't belong. And social media has allowed us to have that sense of belonging, like I said, with people who have a common thread with us. And it's a very beautiful thing when we are able to find that. So I think that aspect of social media has positively affected our collective psyche, that we are able to find people who we get along with, people who understand us and allows us to feel like we belong somewhere in the world and that we have a place. And then to add on to that, if you are a creative of some kind and you are wanting to connect with people who may be able to, I don't know, you can create shit with them or they can help you with something creatively, whatever it is, whatever it is that you are creating, whether it's art or music or whether it's something that has to do with therapy, whatever it is, whatever it is that you are trying to bring into the world and offer to people, if you connect with people on social media, which 
you know, the platforms enable you to do that. If you are able to connect with people who either have resources that you don't have or have an understanding that you don't have, they are able to, you know, through that connection, you are able to learn something. You're able to potentially grow your business or grow your clientele or whatever it is. And that leads me to my next pro, I guess, of the collective psyche having social media which is if you are a business, it allows you to connect directly to your consumers and reach potential customers. You can grow your audience or your clientele. Social media helps you to create easier communication between yourself and other businesses. And it is much easier to promote or announce changes within your business using social media. So not only are you able to connect with people who are like-minded, but you are also able to connect with people who potentially are willing to buy your product or invest in your content because they resonate with it or they need it. Whatever it may be, you are now able to find people who are potential customers for you. And I feel like I have this as a pro for positively impacting the collective psyche because I think for the most part when things are going well at the office or things are going well with our money and things are going well at the bank for the most part it generates this happiness this feeling of contentment within most people you know nobody enjoys going into a job they hate nobody enjoys having to be stressed every day at work nobody enjoys knowing that they are stressed about money or concerned about money nobody enjoys those things so When you are in this place where, you know, your business is growing and you're connecting with people and you're having new connections and because your clientele is growing, your wallet is growing, you are in this place, like I said, of contentment, of joy, of optimism, and you feel good. And think about how many people have had their businesses be positively impacted because of the use of social media and how that's allowed them to grow as a business and to reach new heights and to reach more people. It's a very beautiful thing. And I think that, like I said, as a collective, we enjoy knowing that we are stable. We enjoy creating. And, you know, to loop all that back around, the use of social media allows us to do that. Leading into, is it my final pro? Yep. (laughs) Leading into my final pro of why social media can positively impact our collective psyche is because we are now exposed to more educational information than we ever have been and like I said this can be seen as both a positive and a negative depending on which light you choose to look at it as and we will discuss the other half of that coin in a second but for the most part the fact that we are now able to have access to so much information and so much history and so much education online it's a very beautiful thing that now pretty much at the top of a button we can pull out our phone and we can look up whatever it is that we want to know and instantly gain new knowledge that's a very beautiful thing and it's a very powerful thing so verbatim i wrote down we can now hear about global events through social media we have access to information that would have otherwise been unseen possibly in articles or certain studies and they can make their way around platforms now and we are exposed to various perspectives on global events politics histories and realities and we are able to learn from others due to this massive exposure i actually briefly talked about the negative aspects of this in my 20 something and stressed out youtube video which i will link in the description if you would like to check that out but i talked about how this massive exposure can be such a detrimental thing to people's mental health because you can see so much at one time Not only are you exposed to other people's lives, but you're also exposed to global offense. You are now, you know, so not only are you seeing news of, you know, some fucked up horrible things that happened in your hometown, but you're also seeing fucked up and horrible things that happened a thousand miles away. And it just can create this nervous system response within you of anxiety, of fear, of sadness. And so you're having these emotional responses to everything that you're seeing. And as I said, it can be very detrimental to your mental health. But on the other side of that coin, the fact that we are now able to know so much and to be aware of so much can allow us as a collective, as a global collective, to try to do things to create a better society, a better global society going forward because we now know what's happening, when it's happening. We now have organizations that use social media that allow them to spread awareness for certain issues through those platforms. And it's very very gorgeous and it's very important and the reason why i said that this can positively impact the collective psyche is because this allows us this 
exposing of information and of events and of history and different realities and different perspectives can allow us, if we allow them to, to deepen our understanding of not only the human collective and of things that are happening, but, you know, create a deeper understanding of ourselves and our own boundaries, our own prejudices, our own stereotypes, our own limits of what we understand. So it can create emotional and mental education. That is, if we allow it to. (laughs) Okay, so then moving into the cons of social media, which... I feel like there are a lot and I didn't even I think like I only really scratched the surface with all of the negative aspects of social media on not only the collective psyche but our personal psyche and honestly you don't need me to tell you all of that if you want me to tell you all of that like like I said I have some other videos on YouTube like 20 something and stressed out or um, having depression on your spiritual journey those are all, like I said, I'll just link my YouTube channel in the description so you can check that out on your own accord. But you don't need me to tell you the negative impacts of social media. There are so many licensed psychologists and there have been so many neurological studies that have been done on how exactly you know social media can negatively impact our mental health. And there are so many people who are willing to talk about how social media has negatively impacted their mental health, thus causing them to either leave platforms, quit platforms, etc. And you can just, you know, immerse yourself in that on your own time and really gain all of those different perspectives from a licensed one and an unlicensed one. But we're just going to scratch the surface a little bit with some of the cons of using social media. The first one being that... <laughs> A screen is not an in real life interaction. It's easier to say things that wouldn't be said in person. And the second one is one that I feel like I have thought about quite often that because a screen is not an in real life interaction, it can cause a potential decrease in empathy when online, which could potentially translate to in real life interactions antisocial behavior due to people no longer pursuing friendships in their real life because of the online community that they have and they feel like the online community is enough. Tone and intent can't be deciphered as easily through text. It's easier to get into arguments or disagreements because the message was misinterpreted. So I think we've all heard at some point in our lives, whether it was from a parent or a teacher or a podcast or a YouTube video or or wherever the hell you heard it, we have all heard that essentially online interactions are technically not real interactions because they are not happening face to face. There is a screen separating you and the other person on the receiving end of whatever conversation that you are having. And as I said, all of the things that I mentioned are just some negative aspects of why that you know, face to screen (laughs) contact can be negative. And so the reason why I feel like this negatively impacts our collective psyche is because this can cause a decrease in empathy and social behavior and an increase in anger and short tempers. Like we've all been online and either it was on Twitter or it was on Reddit or on YouTube comment section, wherever, wherever it was. And we have all seen some interaction that could have started innocently enough become wild as fuck in the span of like four messages and so suddenly these two people who don't know each other are going back and forth about a certain topic that in the grand scheme of things is really irrelevant to both of their lives and our lives as witnesses i think we have all seen it And even if the topic of conversation is relevant and does have to do with some sort of important subject that, you know, is necessary to the collective conversation, the manner in which the conversation is taking place is not civil. There are insults being thrown. There may be slurs being thrown. There may be inaccurate information being thrown out there. And it just becomes this very buck wild interaction that didn't need to be that way. You know what I mean? And we know that it didn't need to be that way. And so because of those interactions, I feel like it causes, and like I said, I thought about this quite a bit before I ever, I sat down to make this podcast episode. I've been thinking about it for like the last three days, that it causes this decrease in empathy. 
I think humans are very sensitive and empathic creatures. I know that empathy and the concept of being an empath is something that's become very popular over the last couple of years with psychologists writing about highly sensitive people, but also with the rise of spirituality, people are starting to understand their sensitivity on a deeper level. And I think those are very beautiful things, but I don't think there's sort of an individualism that comes to that. I think many humans are sensitive. I think we as a collective are sensitive, like getting angry, is a form of being sensitive, you know what I mean? It's just on a very opposite side of the spectrum than someone who may get very emotional and may cry. I feel like humans by nature are very sensitive and I think we're all very highly sensitive people. Some of us obviously more in tune with it than others, but we are sensitive creatures. And I feel like because of these screen interactions that have become so normal, for the most part, we only interact with the same circle every day. We interact with ourselves first of all right but we also interact with our partners if we're in a relationship with our kids if we have kids with our families with our coworkers, and maybe with friends or extended family depending on you know your particular day-to-day -day interactions but for the most part we interact with the same people every single day and so most of our interaction with strangers comes from online activity and as i said because we are not talking to someone who is in you know person they are not face to face with us, I think it allows us to potentially say either the first thing that has come to our mind without a filter, or it allows us to say just, again, the most buck wild thing without any sort of filter, without any sort of conscious, because it hasn't quite clicked to us that we are communicating with a real life person on, who is on the other end of the screen with feelings, with emotions, and with their own thoughts. When we are communicating with people in person, we pick up on their energy. We pick up on the vibe. You know what I'm saying? That's become a very popular term now. Like we feel the vibe of the conversation, the vibe of the room. We can pick up on their tone a lot easier, on the inflections within their voice that help us to understand what they're trying to say and the intent behind what they're saying. We can pick up on their body movements, their facial expressions. Being able to communicate with someone in person is such a deeper level of communication than it is when we, again, are communicating with a literal screen. That detachment is there. We are not picking up on anything. We are not directly, you know, face to face with someone. So we can just say whatever the fuck we want to. And essentially, there are no repercussions for that because it's a screen. And so I was just like contemplating how this has negatively impacted our ability to be empathetic with other people and to sympathize with other people's situations, even if their situation is very different than ours, or if they have a different perspective than we do. The ability to communicate, I feel like, has significantly decreased over the years, and I do feel like social media is part of the reason for that. I feel like that could be an entire YouTube video or a different podcast episode within itself of how our communication has just, like, in a general sense, both improved, but also simultaneously like gone to shit because of social media. So um, if you are interested in seeing that, you can just, you know, if you are seeing this in YouTube video format, uh, just leave a like or a comment on this video. But yeah, overall, the fact that we are now for the most part communicating with screens, I feel like has significantly had a negative impact on our psyche as a collective because it decreases our ability to really be able to communicate with each other. Moving on to I feel like is the most popular reason among women as to why they choose to either leave social media or they feel like it has a negative impact on social media. Granted, this happens across the entire gender spectrum, but I feel like women specifically, young girls, tend to deal with this more than older age groups or in other gender groups, which is comparison. It is now easier than ever to be able to compare ourselves with people that we don't know. <laughs> so what I wrote down was it's easier for people to become discouraged because someone is where they want to be and they are not there yet. We are now seeing decreases in body image and self-esteem due to the current beauty standards. There's now the term FOMO, which is fear of missing out. The idea that you're missing out on something when you technically are not trying to catch experiences that aren't for you. Social media has been known to increase anxiety and depression in teenagers, but I feel like this applies to adults as well. And I think all of these honestly are very self-explanatory. I think all of us know what it feels like to be scrolling on social media, whichever platform that you happen to be on at that time. And we see something and we see someone's achievement and we see someone's success or we see someone's body in a photograph, in a still photograph, or 
we just see some aspect of this person's life and we feel that familiar twinge of like comparison of, well, I'm not doing things that way or I'm not there yet or I don't look like that. Should I look like that? Like, do I need to look like that in order to be pretty or to be attractive? And it just creates, it can create this spiral of just unworthiness and not being aware of how consuming all of these different aspects of people's lives can negatively impact the way we view ourselves and our own journeys. Like when we were younger, our friend group was pretty much all we could really compare ourselves to. Like they got that new toy. Fuck, I want that new toy. But like that's pretty much as far as it went. But now it goes beyond the people, like I said, who are in our realities all the time. It goes beyond the people that we, you know, have most of our connections with. Because we are exposed to so many different people around the world, we are able to compare ourselves with people who technically on paper are in similar positions as us. They may be the same gender, they may be the same age, they may be the same racial demographic, whatever it is. And so we're able to look at their lives and how much they've done or what they're doing or what they look like. And it just, as I said, it creates this seed almost of doubt, of confusion, of you know decrease in self-worth. And it's a very unfortunate thing to witness so many people of so many different age groups. And like I said, racial demographics go through and experience just that feeling of not being worthy and not appreciating, as I said, their own journey, their own timeline and their own personal achievements and their potential, all because they are comparing themselves to someone that they don't even know on social media. And so I feel like this has caused a increase in depression and anxiety and comparison and discouragement for us as a collective. All right, and so my last one, my my big two that I think you've also heard before, is that social media is a time passer, thus can lead to addiction. I think we all know that five minutes can easily turn into 50 when we are on social media. Apps are designed to keep us engaged. And if you do not believe me, all you have to do is Google it. But okay, jokes aside, I will provide a, a link in the description that talks about how social media apps are specifically designed to keep us more engaged and addicted to the app. And then from that article, you can just kind of go down the rabbit hole yourself. I also wrote down, take note of the time you spend on social media and how much time you spend scrolling. Is there anything else you could be doing in that time? So if you have an iPhone, I can't necessarily speak for other phones, but if you have an iPhone, you know that they have that weekly screen time that kind of shows up now and you're able to see how often you are on certain apps and how long you know, you're spending time on your phone. And I feel like that's a very cool thing to now have on our platform i think most of us ignore it for the most part but it's cool that you're able to see just how often you're spending time on certain social media so like are you spending six hours on instagram a day and if you are what else could you be doing in that six hours that could either progress your career or you know get things done around the house or a creative endeavor or either even just like relaxing and like taking time to like do something else that doesn't involve looking at the lives of other people or consuming brain dead content you know what i mean thus the fact that we spend so much time on social media can lead us inevitably to the lovely word that i think is always talked about when we are discussing social media addiction your sense of worth can become connected to social media rewards meaning likes comments follows you may begin chasing those rewards I am probably not the only person that has done this. You close the app to only find yourself subconsciously reopening it within a few minutes. And we're trained now to respond to notifications. And I feel like that also is very true. I am someone who has my phone on do not disturb all of the time. There are plenty of people in the world that don't and hear every single ping and pong that may come from a social media notification. And so in a way, we're subconsciously training ourselves to always check our phone to always respond to those notifications as soon as they come up i mean it literally is a little bell like i think we've all heard of the pavlov's dog story and in a way we're essentially doing the same thing with notifications and our social media apps something that i started implementing for myself as i briefly talked about earlier in this podcast episode if you are watching this in youtube format the rest of the podcast or the entire the podcast in its entirety will be linked in the description below but at the beginning of this podcast episode i was talking about how over time as i felt my relationship with instagram start to downgrade 
that I noticed that I was spending less and less time on social media. Like I noticed that gradually I just no longer felt like I wanted to be on Instagram. And so what I started doing was because like I said, I felt bad for no longer engaging as often as I did with the people that I was following. And I didn't want them to feel like, I don't know, I had like stopped paying attention to their content or stopped supporting their work. So I would set a timer. I would either set it for 30 or 45 minutes and I would spend that a lot of time on social media, on Instagram. And then once that 30 or 45 minutes was up, I would just completely get off the app and like not touch it for like a couple of days. All right, so then this leads me into what I wrote down as potential solutions. Like I said, everything that you're hearing, these are like right when I wake up thoughts so clearly like I said I couldn't sleep so this is what was on my mind for an entire eight hours as I was asleep and it just all came out as soon as I woke up so the potential solutions that I wrote down was the most obvious one which is limiting your time on social media so this is essentially what I recommend in order to keep your time on social media in check and to also limit the amount of time that you're just spent aimlessly scrolling for hours and hours and then you wake up and it's dark and you haven't eaten anything and you're just like what the fuck happened you know having a timer prevents that from happening so find a time that works for you whether it's 20 minutes 30 minutes 40 minutes even an hour just set that a lot of time to make sure that this is now instagram time or this is now tumblr time or this is now reddit time and then the rest of my day will be spent focusing on and doing other things my second tip And it's one that has been in my mind for a very long time. I actually found this tip from someone else, I think, when I was like 16 or 17, and it's always stuck with me, to ensure that you're only following accounts of people that you truly enjoy seeing on your feed. Reality and in real life can be difficult enough. Why have your online world be stressful too? There are people that hate follow, which doesn't make any sense to me, but you know, I would say do you, but like, nah, don't do that. Like, don't don't put yourself in a situation where you're seeing people that you don't like all the time. Like, that doesn't make any sense. That's not healthy for your emotional state or your mental state. Like, do not do that. Like, make sure that you are following people who you actually want to see. So not just a bunch of celebrities, not just a bunch of people who you haven't ever spoken to in your life or will never speak to in your life, not people that you feel obligated to follow. Make sure that the accounts that you are having show up on your feed either make you feel good in some way educate you in some way inspire you or you're connected with them in some way just make sure that there's actual value coming from having this person on your feed even if that means unfollowing some people like shit happens you move on you no longer resonate with something that you used to resonate with and at times that can be people that can be accounts so don't be afraid to unfollow people it literally is your online world and you can make it whatever it is that you choose to make it as i said in real life can be fucking stressful and confusing and annoying enough why have your online world also be another space where you're annoyed and confused and just pissed off You know, like that doesn't, it doesn't have to be that way. You have control over your online space and create it to be what you want it to be. My third potential solution is to turn off notifications. As I said, I am someone who keeps my phone on do not disturb all of the time. And even beyond that, with certain apps, I have turned off notifications for them completely because I just don't need to see notifications from those apps. And I don't need my home screen just flooded with shit that's going to distract me or things that I don't need to know at the time. So control your notifications. You don't need to be alerted of something new (laughs) that's posted every single hour of every day. You don't need to know every comment immediately or every like immediately. Like, Just turn off your notifications or at least limit them so you're not being bombarded all of the time with, as I said, pings and pongs. My fourth potential solution of making your Instagram or your social media a better place is to remember that every screen name is a person just as you are and i know this may sound so let's hold hands and all sing together i know it sounds very frou-frou but genuinely like every single username that you see on any social media is for the most part there's an issue with like bots now but like for the most part they are a human a human with thoughts emotions and feelings and who has their own life and they may be going through shit or they may be having a really good day but like them potentially going through shit shouldn't be the justification or the reason why you have to just be civil to them like they are a person and that is ground enough for you to not just be a dickhead unnecessarily you know what i mean 
And to just keep that in mind as you were having these like online interactions that you were communicating with actual people and not just like robots who sit behind a screen and like say shit to antagonize you. Like it's actually a person. And also keep in mind that the block button is so fucking free. Like if you (laughs) encounter someone who's annoying or someone who's bothering you or is just saying like really out of pocket shit, instead of directly engaging with them, which keep in mind you don't have to, block them, mute them, report them. Like it is, again, your online space and you choose who gets to be in it, who gets to interact with you, who gets to communicate with you. And that block button is so free and will give you the peace of mind that you're possibly looking for once you get rid of all of the dumb asses that are bothering you on a daily basis. And then also, I think I think this is also on the same side of that coin and is my fifth potential solution, is to know when your input is needed and when it isn't. The question becomes to engage or not to engage. And to just know when you don't need to comment on something, when you don't need to add your opinion to something, it's more than possible to see something that's out of pocket or see something that's fucked up or see something that's confusing and to just decide, nah, like, mm, I'm not going to engage with that. And you literally can just like continue on with your life or go to a different site or continue scrolling without having to feel like you need to engage or to educate or to argue with or whatever. Just know when it's necessary for you to say something and when it's probably better that you just fall back and like continue about your day so you don't fuck up your days for both of you. So yeah, those were all of my thoughts about the psychological impact that social media has on us as individuals, but also as a collective society. And to 